So this is Miles. You guys might know him best as Spider-Man, but actually, this isn't just a story about Miles discovering his Spidey powers, but rather, also the story that might have changed animation forever. But let's back up. Animation for the longest time meant seeing something like this, or like this. It's a medium that has been dominated by Disney and Pixar for the most part, with them holding 12 of the top 20 highest grossing animated films of all time. Not only that, the last time anything other than a 3D computer generated animated movie won an Oscar was 2002. And that was none other than the masterpiece of Spirited Away. Crazy, right? <laughs> Honestly, just to break the fourth wall here for a second, Researching this made me realize how little innovation or variety there has been in the upper echelon of animated movies. So as one would expect, most other high grossing animated films emulated them using the same photorealistic animation style as Disney and Pixar films for decades. Then bam, out of nowhere came this movie. Released in 2018, it had a completely different style that none of us had ever seen. I remember thinking in the cinema, this is so damn cool. It feels so refreshing and fun to watch. I was kind of in awe. And it wasn't until later that I realized why. It was because I truly hadn't ever seen anything like that before. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse truly took the movie and animation world by storm, grossing nearly $400 million, winning the Oscar for Best Animated Feature, the first non-Disney Pixar The first non-Disney Pixar Actually, the first non-Disney R- the first non-Disney or Pixar win since Rango in 2011. Now, just to be clear, this isn't to say there hadn't been a ton of innovation and variety in the animation medium throughout the decades. Movies like Klaus, Isle of Dogs, The Breadwinner, Tale of Princess Kaguya by, by Studio Ghibli, but most of it passed under the radar. That's the problem. With little critical acclaim or box office success, which at the end of the day, let's be honest, is what motivates most studios. So a film like Spider-Man needed to come and shake up the industry to show studios and animators alike what was possible. And that creativity was truly welcomed by audiences. And that's because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse made a few very specific decisions that separated it from any other animated movie ever. The goal with this movie was to break the mold to break the conventions of animation completely. During production, actually, one of their mantras was that if it looks and feels like something from an animated movie, it's not our movie. Which I think is a sick mantra to have because that's how you create genre-defining movies. They really wanted to bring the source material to life and that meant the first big decision, combining 3D models with 2D line drawings. They added line work to faces to make them seem more expressive, sometimes even added 2D illustrations of an entire scene onto the frame. If you watch the movie, you just have to pause at the right time and you can see these amazing illustrations. And of course, they added other comic book elements like thought or speech bubbles and sound descriptors, making us really feel like a comic book was staring us in the face. Not a movie. The second big decision was playing with the frame rate. This was subtle, but so important. So bear with me here while I explain this. <laughs> Animated movies are usually created in 24 frames per second. And this movie's no different. But for this movie, they reduced the animation of the characters themselves to 12 frames per second at times. Something that's usually done in 2D animation, stop motion, or anime. This basically means one new drawing in every two frames. This is what gives some scenes that jagged and unsmooth feel to them. Like, check out the scene right here. For some of it, Miles is animated at 24 frames per second, but for others, it's 12 frames per second. Can, can you tell the difference? It's, it's pretty stark once you actually realize it. Another really major decision was to not use motion blur in the traditional sense. So motion blur is that blurriness that occurs when an object moves really fast on the screen. Seen in live action movies for so long, 
that when 3D animation came along, they had to recreate it because viewers were already used to seeing it. But since we're using a computer for the animation, it can easily be turned off. This usually doesn't look so great as motion blur makes motion feel smoother and softer. That's why people use it. But the Spider-Verse people wanted to do it their own way as they should, and they turned off motion blur and instead added quick drawings between fast motions to give the feeling of motion blur in their own way. And all these key decisions that the studio made doesn't even touch on the visual dazzle of having multiple characters all in different animation styles on the screen at one time. They really went off in this movie. <laughs> all of these factors meant the team making Into the Spider-Verse was really making something completely different from what animation usually called for, which also meant having twice the amount of animators a typical animation movie would have. They embraced creativity by finding different ways to bring their source material to life, and that's why it works. The animation style comes from a relevant place. It's not just done just cause. These decisions have purpose and meaning behind them. One would think I'd say that 2018 was the year animation changed forever, right? Because that's when Into the Spider-Verse came out. But that's actually not the case. Because even if Into the Spider-Verse was successful, no one could have really known the impact it would have on studios and movies going forward. Not until 2023. 2023 truly became the year this creativity and animation took over. With films like Nimona, Puss in Boots, uh, Teenage, Mutant Nin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, goddamn, <laughs> Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse coming out and dominating the animated box office. 2023 truly showed audiences and producers the future of animation and was the year that cemented the style that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse started in 2018. And that's the thing, each of these movies work for a specific reason. The animation style comes from a relevant place. For Spider-Man, it's comics, obviously. For Puss in Boots, it's fairy tales. For Nimona, it's medieval paintings, believe it or not. <laughs> For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the team was inspired by teenagers and how a teenager would draw. And I think you could see that rough element in the movie. What if it's animated by teenagers, so to speak? All of these unique animation styles make sense for that specific story. And that's a huge reason why they're all incredible animated movies. Now, sometimes that doesn't work. As you can imagine, there's another movie that very ironically tried to do this, but flopped hard. Disney's Wish. <laughs> it's ironic because the company that had basically dominated the 3D CGI animated look over the past 20 years had realized its animated movies weren't doing so well as of late and wanted to try something different. So they basically copied what Spider-Verse started. Wish used a new watercolor aesthetic to mimic Disney movies of old, but Wish is a lesson in the fact that Although animation is important and it's pivotal in an animated movie, of course, but if you don't have that creativity and care around the other parts of your movie, innovative animation ain't gonna save you. So why did this character and this story change animation forever? Well, because it showed what was possible and has obviously inspired a whole generation of animators and directors to let loose and be driven by creativity and innovation rather than feeling forced to follow Disney and Pixar's lead. The influence was so significant that this year, four of the five movies nominated for the Oscar of Best Animated Feature are movies that aren't typical 3D CGI. It seems like the tide has truly turned for animation. That's exactly what the medium needed. And I could not be more glad that we've turned the page into a new era of animated artistry. Anyway guys, that's it for me. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the video. Comment down below. I always respond to comments and I'll pin the best one. Like the video if you liked it and check out my other ones. Have a great one. See ya in the next one.